Good morning. Today is Sunday, July 5th. We gather here today to celebrate the resurrection and worship God. I'm glad you're here. I have a few announcements before we begin. First off, I am enjoying time off here in beautiful Bermuda. The water is crystal clear, the beaches are immaculate. No, I'm, I'm not in Bermuda, but I am on vacation and enjoying some Sabbath time. I'll be back in the office on Thursday, but feel free to call me anytime before that if there's an emergency. Reverend Dr. Joe Schultes will be preaching and leading story time today. Thanks very much, Dad, for helping out. The reopening task force is watching what's happening with COVID-19 very closely, and we're in communication regularly to make the best decision we can about when it will be safe to gather for in-person worship. And finally, I hope you're having a very happy and safe Independence Day weekend. Uh, happy 244th birthday to the United States of America. You don't look a day over 190. Let us begin our worship with the prelude. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Re 
reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. Good morning, Zoe. Good morning. Hey, this is different. Now, some people out there may not know this, but I am Ben and Zoe's paternal grandfather. And all the years we've known one another, I can't recall another time we wore masks around one another. So that's a kind of different fashion statement, isn't it? Speaking of fashion, do you think I own a hot pink dance jacket? No. No? Well, guess what? Guess what? Look what I have. It's my very own hot pink dance jacket. You didn't know about this, did you? This is mine. Now, there's a story behind this. Many years ago, your Aunt Christie, when she was a teenager, danced and, and performed on a dance competition team called Fabergé Follies. And they had these pink dance jackets for their team. But as you see, the charm is it? There's a smudge over here. Well, somewhere there's a smudge on this jacket. And Christie said, I want a new jacket because this one's dirty. And we said, OK. And then I said, I'm going to wear your old top pink dance jacket. And I did. And your grandmother had it inscribed her. She had to put the name The Red on the jacket. Because you see, The Red is what Christie's dance teacher used to call me. Okay. Yeah. Now, when Christie was in dance, taking those dance lessons, she tried to teach me how to dance. She showed me where to put my feet, when to move, when to go forward, when to go backwards. But guess what happened? It didn't work. My mind knew what to do, but I had no idea. My feet just wouldn't work. I don't know what went wrong. But I couldn't do what I was supposed to do. And that reminds me of something in today's second reading from Paul. Paul says that, you know, sometimes I want to do the right thing, but I just can't do it. Sometimes we want to do the right thing, but we can't do it. That happens to me a lot. I know we're supposed to be kind and generous and caring, but sometimes I'm not kind and generous and caring. That's a problem we all have. And Paul asked the question, who's going to save us from all of this? Who will rescue us? And Paul answered, thank God. Thank God that Jesus, Jesus will rescue us. Because see, when we fall down, and we don't do the right thing, Jesus will lift us up. It says that in today's psalm, that Jesus is the one who will lift up those who fall. So um, let's remember that even though we don't always do the right thing, Jesus will lift us and help us to do better. Let's pray together. Say these words after me. Dear God, Dear God thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for lifting us when we fall down. 
Help us to follow you. Help us to follow you. Amen. Amen. Okay. A reading from Zechariah. The coming Masonic king will inaugurate an era of disarmament and prosperity. Because of God's covenant with Israel, the people are designated as prisoners of hope. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumph and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. The king will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 145 The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. That all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. A reading from Romans. Life captive to sin is a catch-22 existence in which we know good, but do not do it and do things we know to be wrong. Through Jesus Christ, God has set us free from such a fertile existence. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. <clears throat> For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my physical body another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my body. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew the 11th chapter. Jesus spoke to the crowd saying, to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. 
Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, send your spirit upon us and open our hearts and minds to the word we need this day. In your son's holy name we pray, amen. When it comes to dancing, I have, as they say, two left feet. Oh, I've tried. Several years ago, my daughter had a vision of, of us dancing together. She started teaching me the steps. I did okay at first, but the further along we went, the more confused I got. I wanted my feet to go in the right place, but they never ended up where they ought to be. I couldn't get them where they belonged. You know, I've got the same trouble dancing with Jesus. I intend to follow his steps, but I don't always do it. But wait, did I say dancing with Jesus? Did Jesus dance? Songwriter Sidney Carter answers the question saying, we don't know whether Jesus ever leaped to the rhythm of pipe or drum. We are told that David danced and is an act of worship too, so it's not impossible that Jesus did the same. Carter wrote those words in reference to his song, Lord of the Dance. He tells the story of Jesus and dance imagery. It goes like this. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon, the stars, and the sun. And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and for John. They came with me, and the dance went on. I danced on the Sabbath, and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped, and they stripped, and they hung me on high, and they left me there on a cross to die. I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone, but I am the dance and I still go on. They cut me down and I leapt up high. I am the life that'll never, never die. I'll live in you if you live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. After each of those stanzas is this refrain. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Jesus invites us to dance with him. I accept his invitation. I want to follow all his steps, flow with his rhythm, and imitate his every motion. And sometimes I got rhythm. And sometimes I'm in the motion. And sometimes I'm stepping right along and my feet are right where they ought to be. But, but that doesn't happen as often as I might wish. I want to follow his dance, but too many times I find myself listening to another tune or trying to choreograph my own steps or maybe even trying to get Jesus to dance my way. For example, Jesus came to be Lord of the nations. He is judge and savior of all the earth. On a national holiday, it's good to remember that because sometimes we may try to get Jesus to dance the American way. We might use him to endorse our way of doing things. We might expect him to consider us pure and righteous, while other people are evil and demonic. We might believe he should favor us over others, 
For surely we may begin to think, the way we live, that's what Jesus wants. We are right, and all those other people are wrong. Sometimes I start to think like that. And when I do, I recall the words of Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War. He said this, both North and South read the same Bible and pray to the same God. Each invokes his aid against the other. The prayers of both could not be answered. That of either has been answered fully. The Almighty has his own purposes. I find those to be simply remarkable words. Today, almost every politician will ask God to bless the United States. Some politicians will invoke God's name to bring judgment and condemnation on opponents. Few, though, remind us that every nation, including our own, stands under the judgment of God. We need to remember that being American does not make us better than anyone else. In the eyes of God, there is simply no greatest nation, for Jesus comes to dance with everyone. Sometimes I forget that. I begin to drift away from Jesus and begin to think that my kind of people, well, we're simply better than everybody else. And when that happens, I'm drifting away from the Jesus dance. I find myself in a place I ought not be. But thanks be to God, Jesus is a partner that will not give up on me. He keeps coming again and again saying, let's dance. I may find myself on the opposite side of the room from him, he looks around until he finds me, makes his way to the crowd and says, let's dance. I may find myself in a dance hall all the way on the other side of town. Jesus keeps searching the streets, checking every gathering place until he finds me. And then he says, hey, let's dance. I may find myself not wanting to dance with him or anyone else, preferring to keep myself in splendid isolation. At such times, he'll be sitting with me, even though I don't realize he is there. And he gives me all the time I need to be alone. When I happen to look up and see him, he smiles and says, come on, let's dance. Jesus, never stops inviting us into his good work and into his good life. So let's follow his lead. Let's go with his steps. Let's flow with his rhythm. And when we fall down, he'll lift us up and the dance will go on. Amen.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Today, Lord, we pray for the church. Fill us with your Holy Spirit as we strive to share your word, your truth, and love with others. Embrace us along with Christ Hamilton in Hamilton Square with their pastor, Stephen Claycomb, as we all struggle to love and find common ground in the midst of this troubled world. Hear us, O oh God. Your love is steadfast and true. O oh Lord, your kingdom is everlasting and care of your creation is left in our hands. We pray that we all work to protect air, water, creatures and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from any apathy in our responsibilities and direct us towards sustainable living. Hear us, O oh God. Your love is steadfast and true. Lord, we pray for nations, especially for the United States and Canada, who are celebrating their nationhood this month. Guide our leaders to create just policies and have conversations to bring about unity and end division within us. Teach us not only to love thy neighbor, but thy enemies too. Teach us to celebrate our likenesses and differences. Help us to end the hate and distrust. Hear us, O oh God. Your love is steadfast and true. We pray, O oh Lord, for all those in need, those who are ill, tired, depressed, lonely, oppressed, or afraid. Let them know that they may throw their burdens to you, and you will take their hand, lightening their load. You will lead their feet on your path, never letting them go. Hear us, O oh God. Your love is steadfast and true. Lord, we pray for those who have birthdays this week. Evan Powell, April Miller, Jennifer Baker, Ruth Hinton, Benjamin Schultes, John Saranowski, Brenda Stauffer, and Ann Schlegel. Let them know that they are your children and we love them dearly. May they enjoy their special day. Hear us, O oh God. Your love is steadfast and true. We pray, Lord, for this congregation as we faithfully await to be brought together again as one group under one roof. We thank all who have been working to bring the church into our homes during this pandemic and those who work on making things safe for us once we return. Be with us as we patiently wait. Strengthen our faith so we can feel you with us during this time. Let us continue to pray and help others in any way that we can. Hear us, O oh God. Your love is steadfast and true. Lord, we give thanks for all those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them and you in a new life. Hear us, O oh God. Your love is steadfast and true. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm way overdue for a haircut. I can't wait until the salons open. Did you know that the occupation of hairdressing has been around for thousands of years? Ancient drawings and paintings have been found to people working on other people's hair. And in Africa, some believed their spirits lived in their hair. This made hairdressers very important as they spent hours washing, oiling, and adding ornaments to their clients' hair. Before the pandemic, I recall hearing of hairdressers taking their trade to the streets. Those were homeless 
who could, could walk right up and receive a free haircut, even a shave for men. Some offered free makeovers. I saw online that a church, St. Vincent de Paul in Arizona, has had a hair -a -thon every year. On the last Monday of every month, from 10 to 1, volunteers would show up and give free haircuts. They have done this for at least 27 years, and in 2019, 227 individuals were served and donations of food were given away. What a way to show love and generosity. Reading online also showed me that a haircut can do so much for people's self-esteem, especially those with deep depressions. I have read of hairstylists who have spent hours of their free time to help those who are too depressed to even comb their hair. The results were amazing. Those people couldn't thank the stylists enough and went away feeling like their old selves, feeling hope again. So cheers to our hairstylists and barbers. I pray that they have made it through the pandemic safely, and I'm sure that as we anxiously await the opening of their salons, they are just as anxious to greet us back.
Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Catholic will be able to join hands 
and singing the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty.